Welcome to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection since 1991. I'm Linda Karnowskis, and I want to thank you for joining us on this Monday, December 19th. We have an informative show for you today. First, we'll be visiting with Mike and Trudy Pierce all about the community dinners. And then later on, we're on location for, and we're going to be showing you some highlights of the uh, hometown holiday parade. Owatonna Today welcomes your suggestions and show topics. Uh, you can do so by emailing us at owatonnatoday at charter.net or by contacting the show's producer, Leanne Alt at 390-5751. Leanne would love to hear from you. We will take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll see you out on location with Mike and Trudy Pierce. So please stay with us. Advancing the common good means creating opportunities for a better life for all. United Way is focused on building blocks for a better life, a stable income, good education, and access to health care. Our goal is to create long-lasting changes by addressing the underlying causes of problems. Living United means being a part of the change and taking action. Hi, I'm Brenda with the Mortgage Office of Brenda Bednar aligned with American Mortgage and Equity Consultants, where closings feel right, right from the beginning. I'm a proud supporter of the Owatonna Today Show. Owatonna Public Utilities, real people, real reliable, real progress. Making life a little easier day after day, taking pride in our community, listening to what you say, a voice you can talk to. We're growing with you, with you in mind in everything we do. Oh, it's on a public utilities. Greetings from the Steele County Historical Society. We invite you to visit us and enjoy your county's history at the History Center and Village of Yesteryear. Check our website for current exhibits and monthly programs. Welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. And we are on location at the Owatonna VFW, and we're here visiting with Trudy and Mike Pierce. And the reason we are is because this is where the community dinners are held, and uh, Trudy and Mike are the ones that coordinate it and put on the community dinner. So I just want to say thank you for having us today. Yes, well, please. You're welcome. Well, let's start out. What is the community dinner, uh, Trudy? Well, it's really a meal that's open to anyone that is alone for the holiday. That's the purpose of the whole event. Uh, we do it on Thanksgiving Day and on Christmas Day. Okay. And who originally started the community dinners? It was Virginia Stearns, and she started it um, a little over 25 years ago, and she hosted at the KC Hall um, here in town. And uh, at a certain point, she decided that she was ready to retire, so she asked us if we would take over the meal and Michael said only if we could move it because here at the VFW it is more handicap accessible, we have a lot more parking, um, the facility is larger, can hold a lot more guests. So um, she agreed to that and so here we are. So the meals have been going on for about 25 years and uh, what year exactly did you take over? 2004. So you've been doing this every year since? Correct. Okay. And over here to your left is your, your husband Mike. And uh, Mike, you are the chef of this whole ordeal, correct? Yes, I try to be. <laughs> okay, why don't you share with us um, what's entailed in preparing and how many people come and that you do, you do both Thanksgiving and Christmas. So yes. I'll let you take it from there. Okay, well normally uh, uh, we start doing turkeys two days before. We, we roast the turkeys in-house here and then we have about six gentlemen and ladies that come and help us carve them. We carve them the same day, uh, get them in the refrigerator right away so that uh, come Thanksgiving morning or Christmas morning at six o'clock, we have the ovens, we fill the ovens with the turkey and the dressing and so they can, we can have that first round warm and ready to go by nine o'clock and we can put that on top of the ovens where we have heat coming up through our griddles to keep them hot and then we can get the next round in. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to keep up with uh, people as they come in. 
Now, explain how many turkeys and what's involved with the, the ordering of that and how you estimate. Well, turkeys, approximately, we need about 400 pounds of finished meat when we're done. And, and so that's, uh, uh, when you take a, a normal turkey, you, you get about 50% uh, product on a 20 pound turkey, turkey you're going to get 10 pounds of finished meat. So at Thanksgiving we had 35 turkeys and 17 roasts and the roast, uh, we've got a very good roast now that uh, tastes as good or better than a regular turkey and there's next to no waste on that. So that it, it's a little more expensive but it, it works to finish out. And it's a really homemade meal. You have the whole, the, 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 you have the common menu Yes. That's served for uh, Thanksgiving. Yes, our our menu for I'll say our menu for Christmas will be turkey and ham. Uh, we they can have a choice, so we don't make quite as much turkey, but because we have ham along with it, and then we have mashed potatoes and gravy and homemade dressing, and we have uh, sweet potatoes and green beans and like four salads, and then we have desserts. At, at Thanksgiving we had pies. At Christmas we'll have cookies for dessert. And you have a team that. Volunteers, just a very small team, that uh, wears a certain color apron, and um, th are those the only ones helping you in the kitchen? Yes, it's been kind of a standing, standing joke. We got a certain color apron can be in the kitchen. The, the help out here's got a, a pale green apron, and they're not allowed in the kitchen. <laughs> okay. Uh, because uh, the kitchen, basically, we have uh, probably five people, and it's been the same people, 90% of the time all the years. And so it works best to just have those folks in there because they know what's going on, what has to be done when, and mm -hmm. I think so it, it works out good. So let's go back to you, Trudy. There's some serious cookie baking going on. Explain yes. that, please, for the uh, Christmas dinner. Well, this, this coming Sunday, we will bake cookies um, enough to serve all of our guests in-house, and then every uh, person that, get, that orders the takeout meal has two or three cookies that are um, delivered to their home. So we spend the afternoon baking I think this year we're going to make about 1,200 cookies. Okay. You've done this for years. Why do you do this? Um, the basic reason is because um, no one really wants to be alone for the holiday. And that's the purpose of the whole meal. It's not just for people that don't want to cook. It's for those people, one or two, that might be home by themselves, whether they're elderly or not. In some cases, um, it might be a young family who's extended family lives across the United States or the weather might not permit them to get together. So this is a place where they can come and feel like they're with family um, and sit and have a good meal and visit with a lot of people so that they aren't alone. This is such a step of faith you do uh, every year. Explain to our viewers why I say that. Well, basically, like I said, we, we do have it for those people that are alone and I think you have to remember, after all, what is the purpose of the holidays. Sometimes it gets way too commercialized, and we have to remember that holidays are supposed to be spent with family or someone that you care about. Um, so we have to remember those people that are less fortunate and don't have anyone around. So well, the faith comes in where the, you don't have volunteers, correct? Correct. We, um, people call us and say, well, if you need help on Thanksgiving or Christmas, give me a call, and I just say to them, no, we don't do that. If you want to help, you just show up. On the day of, we have certain people that come in the one or two days before and help us with the fixing and making the salads and the dressing and everything. But the day of, people just show up at a certain time. If they want to deliver meals to um, homebound people, they come about 10.30 or 11. Uh, some people that want to work in-house and either one of the food lines come about 9.30. So they just come. They just know what their part will be and they count on being able to help. So there's never any pre-registration. You really just have faith that it'll all work out. Right. And it does. It does. My duty the day of both holidays is to be at the door to greet people. Since I worked the two days prior in the kitchen, I'm not allowed to be in the kitchen <laughs> the day Absolutely of. Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> Only my husband and his crew. <laughs> so I greet people when they come in and ask if they're there here to eat with us or if they want to volunteer. And if they want to volunteer, do they want to do it in-house or do they want to deliver or what? And it, um, it works out really well. I have a couple little things that I want to share with you as far as um, people that deliver food. Um, it's a free will offering. Obviously, we need donations to pay for the meal. But, um, and we're lucky enough that the VFW allows us to use the facility and their kitchen, so we're very thankful for that. But some of the um, people that 
get deliveries don't necessarily have any money, so they want to give something. So one, one delivery, this um, little old lady said, I have something for you. So she went to the bathroom, and we were wondering what she was doing there. Uh, <laughs> came back with a brand new toothbrush in a package, and she gave that as her donation. Oh. Another year, um, an elderly gentleman gave the people that delivered the meal a bus token because he wouldn't take the meal unless he could give something in return. Wow. Yeah. And uh, do you have any other stories you could share about over the years? Um, well, it's just one, one holiday melts into the other, and it's just funny. Um, some of the volunteers that we have, uh, young and old, but one, one year one little boy came in with his mom and two older siblings, and he asked if he could help, and I said, sure. So he just ripped off his jacket and threw it on a table, and he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to deliver the milk to some of these people that can't carry it. So it was, it was really cute, but he had his heart in it. That's what it's all about. Okay. Yeah. And then one time you, you delivered, you, were, you shared a story about a, a family in need, a uh, delivery uh, to an apartment or a home. We had a gentleman that took his two teenage daughters to an apartment building to deliver five meals. At that time, that was the limitation. Now we're down to three meals to be delivered because they obviously you're not alone then. But um, he and his daughters went to the door with these five meals and this young lady came to the door and she was so appreciative of the meals and took the meals and said thank you. And when dad and the girls left and got back in the car, he said, girls, did you see something that looked a little bit different? And they said, yeah, dad, there was only that one lady in the room and all I saw for furniture was a mattress on the floor. So what had happened, she delivered, or they delivered meals to that young lady for her full week. So the meals were just for her, but she ordered five meals so she would have something to eat. Wow, so the meals just keep being a success. How many, Mike, do you feed on Thanksgiving and Christmas? Well, Thanksgiving, we're usually between that uh, 900 to 1,000 people, and mm -hmm. Christmas usually is around 600, uh, mainly I think Christmas, People have more of a tendency to try to get their families together so we don't have as many at Christmas time. And let's go over uh, the time and uh, place and everything, how it's going to work on Christmas, Trudy. Well, we um, always serve the meals from 11 to 2, um, uh, both on both holidays. And some people come in as early as 9, 30, 10 o'clock yeah. because they wanted to sit and visit, and that's okay. Yeah. And they get coffee while they're sitting and waiting. Right, right. And they just begin the conversation then. And I just think it's fun that you can see them come in just because they want to visit with other people. Okay. You know? And there's no cost free will drop, free will offering because we got to put it on. Quickly, what does it cost a year to do this? And we got to sign off. Okay. It's, every meal costs approximately $4,500. Okay. Um, so it's a big expense. And we depend on those donations to um, pay for the product because um, BFW donates the hall to us okay. for the meal. Thank you for all you do to bring so, so, much, so much joy to people here in Owatonna who just need someone to hang out with on Christmas. And uh, uh, I've been blessed just by sitting here with you. And uh, we wish you the best and continued success. Thank you much. We will take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. So please stay with us. Hi, this is Eric with the West Hills Tennis and Fitness Center. A heated swimming pool, sauna, running track, cardio room, basketball court, weight room, and six tennis courts are among the amenities you can enjoy at our facility. We have a variety of membership packages available to meet the needs of everyone, or you can simply drop in for the day. Stop out today and take advantage of all we have to offer. West Hills Tennis and Fitness, encouraging and promoting a healthy lifestyle. Hello, I'm Glenn Mager. And I'm Michael Mager with the Brick Mager Funeral Home and the Medford Funeral Home. At Brick Mager, we are privileged to have served the families of Steele County community for 118 years. Whether you choose traditional burial or cremation, we promise the tribute your loved one deserves with the peace of mind that you require. We are proud to be part of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, this is Barry Gillespie, president of ERA Gillespie Real Estate, where our pledge is to save you money, save you time, and simplify your life. And we're proud supporters of the Oatana Today Show.
Hello, my name is Katie Marshall. A year ago, my family and I became homeless. We were scared and alone. Today, with the help of Steele County Transitional Housing and generous donors like you, my family and I are safely housed. I am working, going to college, paying my rent on time. My children have a warm bed to sleep in every night. My family and I are so grateful for this second chance. Please help others in need by donating to Transitional Housing today. Everyone deserves a safe place to live. The gopher sport it! I love your necklace! <laughs> Hi, Jerry! And new songs too.
Synchronized bikers! Ooh, fat tire bikes!
Amy Swain Hearing Centers is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. I'm Dr. Amy Swain, and I want everyone to hear better. Hi, I'm Tim Anderson, the owner of Anytime Fitness, where we make getting healthy, affordable, and convenient. Anytime Fitness is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. We hope you enjoyed hearing all about the community Christmas dinner and Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, we hope you enjoyed uh, the highlights from the hometown holiday parade. Now it's time for community announcements. Owatonna Public Library After Christmas Annual Book Sale is taking place Tuesday, December 27th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Wednesday, December 28th, 9 to 1 p.m. Hardcover and large soft covers are 25 cents each, small paperbacks 10 cents, AV 25 cents and up or as marked. Owatonna winter parking regulations are in effect from November 15th through March 31st. On even numbered calendar days, park on the even side of the street between 12 a.m. and 12 noon. And on odd numbered calendar days of the week, park on the odd numbered side of the street between 12 a.m. and 12 noon. Be our guest, serving community meals in God's name. Free meals are available each week in Owatonna at the following locations. Tuesday at St. Joseph's Catholic Church, Wednesday Bethel Baptist Church, and Sunday Trinity Lutheran Church. Well, we hope you hearing what's going, uh, had fun hearing what's going on in the community, and we hope you will join us on Wednesdays when we'll be on location at the Owatonna Arts Center. We'll be interviewing the Zamboni sisters, and until then, have a great day. We'll see you on Wednesday.